Hey you guys, so I have so many things to celebrate. One of the things I have to celebrate is my channel on YouTube getting to 3,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Another milestone that happened for me was my YouTube channel got monetized, which I can, which means I can start putting ads on it, which might not be good news for you guys, but what that means for me is that this YouTube channel will hopefully continue to improve and evolve and get better, which is good for you guys. So the more time that I can spend here, the more I can paint just for my tutorials, which is my ultimate goal. And right now in my art career, I'm at a place where I still kind of need to financially take commissions, but, and I just recently got a ton of them that I don't, <laughs> Um, I don't want to say anything bad about it. It's great to have work, but I really just want to focus on my videos and that's kind of what I'm obsessed about. And the more my Patreon grows, the more freedom I will have, which is the heart of Patreon. Patreon was created so creators can do their work instead of having to focus on making money. So I appreciate so much how much my Patreon has grown and that is another milestone. I reached my $500 goal on Patreon and so my when I reached my goal, my, um, my plan was to go into 4K video, which I've been doing 4K video. So I need to think of another thing to reach for, but the fact that my Patreon has grown so much recently is what is allowing me to do some of these videos for all of YouTube, like this um, painting that I'm going to show you guys today, which is a painting of Sadie, my black cat. Which, let me see if I can show you. She's right over there. Thank you so much to you guys who have given me support, whether it's from joining my Patreon, which allows me again to do more videos like what I'm going to do today for you guys, um, to, um, and even if you don't support me on Patreon financially, uh, leaving me a comment, liking my videos, uh, watching my videos to the end really helps me a lot. <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate that support because all those things will allow me to do more and more paintings just for you guys. And I have so many ideas for you guys. So I can't wait to explore some of those things. Another thing that I've been doing on my Patreon is trying out new paints. And this is Moon Glow. And I went on an online forum to see what other artists were saying or their favorite granulating paints. And everyone was saying Moon Glow, Moon Glow, Moon Glow. And you can see here when it dries, you see how the dark purple separates out from the red and makes kind of an interesting look. So I think that's why this granulating paint is so popular. So I'm going to try using that in this painting. And again, I am using a special paper that I recently learned about that makes interesting fur textures. If you'd like to learn exactly what that paper is, join my Patreon. You can join for only $5 a month. And then for that $5 a month, you get access to lots and lots of tutorials. You don't get just this tutorial. I have, I think, over 13 or 14 now, and each tutorial is at least an hour long. Most of them are two to three hours long. I have an epic one that I'm still working on of a wedding portrait that is going to be like six or seven hours long. So there is a lot of content for you guys to enjoy over there, and you get more direct access to me, and you can ask me questions about art. And if you join my $18 tier, I'll critique your painting, um, and you also get art supply samples from me quarterly, and you can join at the $13 level tier, and then you get paint dots, and Moon Glow is one of the paint dots that I send out in my first mailing. We have a lot of fun over there. So let's talk about the colors I'm going to use for this painting. I'm going to use Windsor Green Gold and Moon Glow, and probably Lamp Black. And my goal for this painting is to do that fun, loose, painting that you see Yutaka Murakami do a lot. That's my goal for this one. And I have a black cat. So I've been dying to try this technique more and more. And I've done it some. Here's on Yupo paper. <laughs> Here's on Wadi paper. Uh, this is cold press paper. And this one is on this paper that I'm using today. 
see this, you still get really beautiful, soft, furry edges on cold press. It's perfectly acceptable paper to use. Okay, with this technique, the first step that you do is get all your paper wet. And for that, I'm going to use my Silver Black Velvet 3 quarter Oval Brush. If you want to know more about these Silver Black Velvets, uh, you can go on YouTube and search for Silver Black Velvet brush and you will find a lot of reviews so I don't feel like I need to do a review. First step that you do with paper, this paper and cold press, Arches cold press, 140 pound is what I suggest is you wet everything except for where you want to have hard edges which is for me the eyes and I'm going to try to be a little more careful painting around the eyes than I have in these other tries. So I'm going to paint carefully clear water and it's fairly puddling at this point. So I'm gonna get the paper very wet with a lot of water. And move your painting around so you can see where your edges are so you don't paint over anything you don't want to. So I'm painting over this entire surface of this cat. I'm going to even put little inroads into the black part of her eye into the pupil. By the time I get over there, that might dry. I might have to re-wet this paper. But in the best of worlds, you will get this painting done in one wash. And what's nice about my moon glow paint over there is I just squeezed it out onto my palette and so it's going to be nice and soft and supple and ready for me to use and if I hadn't done that in fact let me spray my lamp black to get it kind of activated while I'm thinking about it because I'll probably use lamp black too so I'm just going to spray it maybe spray my indigo what the heck spray everything and get it all activated so it's sitting over there getting getting moist while I do this step. And this step takes some time because what you want to do is you want to get it all wet and then you want to wait. You don't want to paint right away. You want to let the water soak into the paper and also dry some. And what I'm doing here is I am, oh, kitty kitty, you sit over there and look pretty. Um, getting it all equally wet, like so, carefully painting around the eyes. Do you see how careful I'm being with her eyes? And then, I also actually saw you talk to do this. What he would do was, where he wanted a hard harder edge he'd sop up some water so I'm gonna sop up some water around these ears I don't want them to bloom out do I now I think what we could do at this stage is put in this under color which is a purple and I'm actually going to also scrub my lamp black and get it activated so I've got my lamp black here I'm gonna use just this cheap somewhat more stiff square brush that doesn't hold a lot of paint but it'll work well to activate and we can also use this as an opportunity to test the paper to see if it's ready for paint do you see how i'm just sitting here waiting for the paper to dry a little bit so let's do a little test and see how much this explodes so there's a little dot of moon glow and see how it's moving out like that but i do think we're ready to paint so this is the point where you do want to move a little bit more quickly. I'm gonna paint these light areas first. And there's a triangle. Look at your shapes, not at what you think you're drawing. Here is a triangle of light fur coming from her ear like this. Coming from right about this point in, of her ear. comes around nicely, smoothly, all the way.
that moon glow will be interesting. Now, one thing that is different, I think, about me than a lot of other YouTube artists is when I am experimenting, I share those experiments with you even if I fail. And I've done very many paintings on my Patreon where I'm kind of just experimenting around. And it might appear to be that I'm flailing about, but that's what art is all about, is flailing about sometimes. So I'm not I'm not shy about sharing that part of my process. I think that's an important part for my new artist friends to see. And there's this area here. Now this is drawing too much. So I'm gonna go in and re-wet this area. See how hard edged it is? I don't want that. And I'm gonna put some wet water, clear water up against this area because again, I do not want any hard edges. And also I want this to be a really interesting soft edge. So I'm gonna put some more water and rely on my cauliflowering effect to kind of blossom that out some more. And then I'll get some more moon glow here. And I'm going to make it some, somewhat wet and puddling so it kind of pushes this. And when you have more water on your brush than on the paper, the water will push in to the pigmented areas, hopefully. <laughs> and this is only my third time painting on this paper. So yeah, it's a bit of an experiment for me too. This is totally dry, so I'm going to go in with some clear water, and actually this is the nose, so that's not so bad. I'm going to keep that a hard edge right there to delineate the nose a little bit. Won't hurt a thing. Go in with clear water and paint into these areas. And see, I'm re moistening some of these areas because they just, you don't want anything to get too dry. And this part of her fur kind of fans out over her, the top of her forehead area. And then I'm getting really thick paint in here for the bottom of her nose. Really cream consistency, dark, dark paint for a little whisker dot area. And 
And then I always like to try to join trying to stay out of the camera's way, so I'm in kind of an awkward position, but I always try to join the iris. much as I can. This is starting to get too dry. I'm going to have to re-wet. Go back in, put more black in here while I can, while it's still really wet. This is all too dry now. I'll have to re-wet it. Now, I'll keep that as my black brush. I'm not going to rinse this out. I'm going to keep it as my black painting brush, and I'll use this as my clear water brush. I'm going in with some cream consistency lamp black now for this darker area. I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna get this wet again in here. You can see how that's softly merging out into the wet area of the paper. Now, this kitty's ears are not very red, <clears throat> but I do think a little bit of red would add some interest. So while I'm waiting for all this to set, kind of, I can paint this because I know these edges are not very, oh, I got a little bit of a bloom there, but that'll be interesting looking. I think it'll look just fine. Get some moon glow to merge into these areas now. And then I paint with clear water to soften all this, keep it really soft. And then for the black edges of the ear, I go in with cream consistency paint. Just let it do its thing. This is doing too much, I think. Let's see if I can fix that. I don't want it to bloom out that much. Although if this was like a more of a Maine Coon cat, that would make a cool little effect, wouldn't it? But you can just blot. It's not gonna hurt anything. Just blot with a tiny bit. And then I'm going to put clear water all in here to make sure that stays really soft. So you can see the name of the game is to keep the area you're working really moist. And no hard edges.
Sometimes I'll dry out my brush so it doesn't get too much water in it. Cause like right here, you can see I had a lot of water in my brush and that's okay. But you do lose control the more water you have. And I'm gonna put in these edges. And this is getting dry down here, so going with clear water. Now getting more lamp black, going in. Green consistency. Then he has like um some white hairs here. I wonder if I could just use the push technique that I do where I drop clear water into a wet area and have it kind of divide. So that could be like the hairs. Let's see. Pick up some water with my brush. I sopped some water off, up like that. And now I'm going to go back in and drop water right back in and see if that'll bloom that out. It looks like it's going to. I do know that I like it better when it's a little bit more wet, I think. So let's do that. I don't want to mess this up for God's sakes. That is just gorgeous right in there. I love that. And I love how the moon glow, you can really see how the moon glow um, feathered out really pretty there. All right, so now I'm gonna put my clear water back up in this area and I'm leaving a little white edge around this ear so it's delineated. Instead of waiting too long, I'm going to work while my paper is still fairly wet and see if I like that result better. It's really wet though. So I'm gonna paint well back from the edge where I want it to go and let it bleed up into the area. And I'm going to just get a tiny little line. Now see how much that's feathering? And this is pretty dry over here. Yes, kitty, I do hear you. I know you think I don't, but I do. <laughs> My kitty is very demanding. <laughs> Yes, kitty. I know, kitty. Jeez. Right, kitty? She's just really mad now. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush out and get a good amount of moon glow in there. Pretty much. Well, I think I'll do milk consistency because I want this. This area is lighter than this. I don't want to get it too dark. And I want it to look like there's light hitting her. In fact, that's too. I'm going with. Um, first, I'll go in with just tea consistency, and then take it from there. Down here, it's a lot darker because this is towards the bottom of the cat. Down in here. I can get it darker to create dimension. And then I'm going to go in with some lint black, the little wisps of fur that happen. all really wet. I like that little highlight on the ear I got. I might go in actually with some more milk to cream consistency, moon glow, 
and just put some fur textures, just a few, just to say, look, this is where, oh, I like that. That was a big old hunk of actual, um, almost pure paint right there. That looks cool. I like that. All right, now this is probably dry enough for me to work on the eyes a little bit. So I think I'm gonna use my winter green gold, which I love that color. And then if I decide the shape of the eyes is a little off, I can go back in with dark. So like I always do, I go in with clear water. And actually what I think I'm gonna do, let's get tea consistency. Winter green gold so I can see where I'm painting. And then I can put in some glints and paint negatively around some eye glints. That would be pretty, I think. The shape of the eye definitely needs a little bit of work, but I can definitely re refine that easily enough since this is a dark cat. I can do that later. antique turquoise which I found out they're discontinuing I'm so sad so I sent out some antique turquoises paint dots to my patreon members but I'll probably not be able to send them out anymore because it's not gonna exist anymore so yeah that's a bummer but there's plenty of other beautiful paints out there aren't there all right now I just kind of color blocked some different colors in. I'm gonna let that dry and see how it looks. Then I can kind of go from there. I want this bottom part of the eye to be lighter, so I'm gonna drop some clear water down in here. Sop a little bit up with a run out brush. And then drop in some more clear water. And you can sop some up. Now I would like to get this little area of definition a little bit darker right here so let's see now I, this is an experimental painting this is not a um a commission this is just an experimental painting for me so if i mess it up that's fine but i'm just going to gently dab at this now if you're working on arches cold press or some other cold press paper you don't have to be so delicate but this the paint on this paper will come up really easily apparently so i'm trying to be careful I'm going to go in with some cream consistency right here to get this a little bit darker. Definition there. And that line goes like that. See how I'm measuring the angle of that line with my line. So I want that line. My work too. And right, I'm going to spray this because it got a little stiff. And just let it do its thing and see what it does. What does it want to do? I don't want it to do quite that much movement there. I can do some. See, I'm trying to tell it what to do. I should stop. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to get this black area done a little bit better. So I'm going to pat on 
some water. If you're working on arches, you don't have to pat your, pat your water on at this point because your paint will not move. But on this paper, I think it will. So I'm just trying to be really delicate. Because I do want this black area of the forehead darker here. I'm going to go in with some cream consistency, lamp black, and really get it in my brush. all the way up into our forehead like that. Oops. I'm moistening my edges where things get a little too hard edged. I just go in with a clear water brush and re moisten. One thing that I would like to do is put a shadow under the cat, just to ground him a little bit. There's a shadow under the tail. We'll put that in. And I think I'll use my cobalt blue just because I like cobalt blue. Ooh, look at that color. Might be a little too bold, but it's okay. I think it's pretty. There's a little bit of a tail shadow here. It's kind of fun. I'm just going to pat in some ultramarine blue highlights because it's just so pretty. Make the nose more blue.
these. Dark furs that come up into her ear, so let's try to get some more of those. Using a dry brush. That's why these, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why these silver black velvets are so great, this natural hair just really does some pretty dry brush techniques. With the little, it looks like they paint themselves. That comes trouble. Hey, Boo. Hi, dear. How are you doing, baby? Good. Are you having fun with your water wells? Yeah. Good. Did you know I love you? Yeah. And All right, so. I've been tinkering about with Sadie's face because I don't know, I just want her to look like Sadie. <laughs> and I started this tutorial with the goal of doing these soft black cats, but then I just fall in love with Sadie. And I just want her to look like her, so I'm putting more detail on her face just to bring out her Sadiness. I do love her. So I'm just going in with a glaze of blue and purple over her nose. Kind of. I'm dotting along this edge as I am painting on dry paper just to get that look of um, furry softness. Going in with lamp black cream consistency to refine a few little things around her eyes some super black eyeliner right in here being very careful just putting in those little tiny tiny details that just make me satisfied <laughs> that she looks like Sadie
<laughs> Kitty's leaving. Consistency glaze here. I'm just throwing in very delicately. Shall we do the untaping? As they call it over on TikTok, tape porn. <laughs> this is my gel pen, Uniball, yeah. Signo. No, baby. Just putting a little bit more green. To satisfy my <laughs> love of Sadie and her Sadiness. a little bit so then it's quite so hard edge. It'll make them look more dreamy if you get soft edges on your pupils a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. I'm breaking those up a little bit. And that looks a lot better. That finished this painting. It's what it needed. I think I can call that done. What do you guys think?